Namaskar. My name is Holly Kastora, and I'm a senior certified Iyengar yoga teacher. And today we're going to practice a yoga sequence to lift and lighten you up. You know that what you think affects how you feel and how you feel affects what you think. In terms of yoga philosophy, we're taught that the vrittis are the thoughts, and those are the waves on the surface of the ocean of the self. And the kleshas are the feelings, those are the undercurrents underneath the surface of the waves and causing them. Let's practice the yoga of action, reflection, and devotion to smooth out the surface of the self. We're going to practice a variation of Tadasana. You know Tadasana, it's mountain pose. The legs are straight, the arms are straight, the trunk is stretching up in the direction of the head as the arms and the legs reach down. Let's do this. Take your heels to the wall. Press your heels down into the floor and your upper thighs back towards the wall. Open the back of your thighs away from each other. Keep your inner heels pressing down as you turn the backs of the thighs out and the front of the thighs in. Now lift the pubis and the pelvis up Lift the sides of the trunk up and don't forget to lift the armpit up from the bottom all the way to the top. Now bend the elbows and press the top of your upper arm bone at the shoulders apart and back towards the wall. Maintain that and with an exhalation, extend your elbows by stretching your biceps at the top near your shoulders and at the bottom near your elbows. Keep pressing the tops of your upper arm bones out and back towards the wall behind you and lifting the pubis and the pelvis up as you press your upper thighs and the outer wrist near the little fingers back and towards the wall. Feel the stretch of the arms down towards the floor and the lift of the chest up and away from the floor. Keep the heels pressing down, the inner upper thighs moving back and turning the front thighs in. Now step away from the wall, separate your feet, bend your elbows. Press the top of your upper arms out to the sides, then back and towards the wall behind you. Now, keep the top of the upper arm bones in line with the elbows and stretch your biceps. Lift the biceps up at the top near the shoulders and stretch them down at the bottom near the elbows to extend your arms. Now, let's do this again, but on the balls of the toes. So you're going to come onto the balls of your toes, raise your heels up and away from the floor, but keep your hips back over your heels. Now, stretch your arms the way that we did when we had the arms against the wall and feel where the top of your armpits are. If you fall, forward or backward, come back to Tadasana and lift your heels. Now feel where the top of those armpits are. See if you can keep them there and slowly lower your heels down while lifting your armpits up from the sides of your waist, lift up to the top of your armpits 
so that even though your heels are going down, you feel like your armpits are staying where they were. Now let's do the same thing in Urdhva Hastasana. Keeping the arms straight, raise the arms up, raise the heels up, and feel how when you raise your heels up, your armpits lift up. Now keep your armpits where they are and slowly lower your heels down while lifting your armpits up. Don't stop lifting the armpits up as you lower the heels down. And press the thighs back, but keep the elbows stretching at the bottom near the biceps, the biceps stretching at the bottom near the elbows and at the top near the shoulders. Now keep your armpits up and chest opening out as you lower your arms. Next, we're going to practice some of the Hasta Mudra. Ordva Badambuliyasana, interlocking the fingers. Press the webbing of the fingers in towards each other and feel how the elbows want to go out. Don't let that happen so that the collarbones can broaden and you can spread out across the top of the shoulders. Now with an exhalation, maintain that. Press the webbing of the fingers into one another and keep the elbows locked so that the top of the chest at the front and the back continues to spread. Now, lift the armpits up by raising the heels up and keep the armpits lifting up as you lower the heels down. Now keep the armpits lifting up as you lower the arms down. Change the interlace of your fingers. Turn the palms away from you. Lock those, um, the webs of the fingers against each other so that the clavicles and the tops of the shoulder blades don't get locked in towards the neck. Keep those elbows straight. Now raise the heels to raise the armpits up. Raise the heels up and keep those armpits lifting up as you lower the heels down, don't let the armpits go down. Lift the armpits more and more as you lower the heels down. And then release the arms back down without letting the armpits drop down. Lift them up. Gopukasana. With the left arm is the bottom arm and the right arm is the top arm. Now stretch those biceps and feel how the stretch of the biceps opens that armpit and then interlock the fingers. Now raise the head up and as you raise the head up, press the top of the thighs back and keep the tailbone in. Now with an exhalation, bring your head back to the center. Notice the difference of the feeling between this side of your chest and this side. One side feels taller in Gomukhasana arms. One side after practicing Gopukasana arms feels wider. Take the right arm around behind you. Raise the left arm up. Stretch the biceps at the bottom and the top. Now keep those biceps stretching as you bend the elbow and reach for the fingers or use the belt to make that clasp. Now keep the tailbone in and the inner upper thighs pressed back, inner heels down, and raise the head up. Lift the chest, lift the neck, lift the chin, lift the eyes, lift the eyebrows, and take them back and towards the wall behind you. Now, don't let the neck shorten in the front and bring your head back to the center. Feel how tall you are inside now. And as you release the arms, maintain that inner, Tadasana. Next, we're going to practice Virabhadrasana. Both number one, Virabhadrasana one and Virabhadrasana two, but we're going to practice differently. We're going to use a block at the wall, just like we were elevating the heels to get the armpits up, and get that inner tallness, we're going to do that here. So see how I take the block against the wall, I put my front foot on the block, and I step my back leg back. And see how 
I'm going to take my hands to my waist and use my left hand to move this left buttock down and my right hand to pull this right hip back and away from the wall. Now I'm going to take the top of my chest forward and spread my ribs outward and bend my knee, keeping the right hip lifting up and rolling back and the left buttock moving down and that hip turning forward, keeping both legs straight. And I'm going to press that left inner upper thigh back and the right inner heel down to inhale and come up. Take your fingertips to the wall and change sides. Take your left foot to the wall, step your, and onto the block, step your right leg slightly out to the side. Now use your right hand to move that right buttock down and away from the left buttock so that that right hip, outer hip, moves forward towards the wall. Use your left hand to lift the left hip up and pull it back and towards the wall behind you. Keep the weight in the outer edge of your right foot, the inner edge of your left heel as you bend your left knee. Lift those back ribs up and spread them. From inside, move the inner ribs near your lungs to the outer ribs that face the skin. Keep that right leg straight, tailbone in, so that the pubis and the pelvis is lifting up. And then with an inhalation, press your left heel down, right inner heel back, and pull yourself back up. Take your fingertips to the wall and come back to Tadasana. Notice what's different about Tadasana pose after Virabhadrasana 1. Now for Virabhadrasana 2. Take your right foot to the wall on the block, the toes up the wall, and step the left leg back and out to the side. Extend your elbows and raise your arms up so that the palms of your hands face the floor and are in line with the top of your armpit chest. Now imagine you could press your hands down into two tall stools to raise the sides of your waist, the sides of your rib cage, and your armpits all the way up. Now make your ribs as wide as your arms and bend your right knee so that it moves towards the wall, but keep the weight balance of your body distributed evenly between your back foot, the left foot, and your right foot, which is the front foot. As if you were performing Virabhadrasana 1, this right side of the pelvis has to lift up and away from the thigh. Keep your chest opening as wide as your arms. Open the bottom ribs, open the middle ribs, open those upper ribs. And then press your right inner heel down into the floor and draw the outer right thigh up to straighten the knee. Take your hands to the wall, hand to the wall, step in and off the block. Let's do the same thing on the left side. I'm going to have to turn my back away from you. So you're placing your left foot up on the block, step that right foot back and out to the side. But now here you'll have a chance to see how the top of this thigh wants to sort of shrink in towards the midline and forward towards the bone. And I'm going to open it out, and so are you, so that I can press the top of the thigh bone back towards the hamstrings. Keep the left inner heel pressing firmly into the block and extend your arms. Press the palms down and the wrist down so that the sides of the waist, the sides of the ribs, and the armpits lift up. Now open the ribs. Open the bottom ribs, the middle ribs, and the top of the ribs as wide as the arms. 
And with an exhalation and lifting that left side of the pelvis up and away from the top of the thigh, not down towards the thigh, up and away from the top of the thigh, bend the left knee so it moves towards the wall. Move the right inner thigh away from the wall, at the knee and at the hip, as you move that left inner thigh towards the wall. Keep the ribs lifting and spreading. Don't drop the armpits. Now press your right inner heel down, press the left inner heel down, and draw that outer left thigh up to straighten the knee. Then take your hand to the wall, step off of the block, and come back to Tadasana. Now we're going to practice a variation of Parigasana where the front foot is against the wall and the bottom arm hand is placed on a block. So, in Parigasana, the hip is over the knee. The knee is not outside the hip or inside of it. So I'm going to take this block in my hand and just like I did um, on the back leg in Virabhadrasana 1, I'm moving the buttocks down towards the floor. And like I did in Tadasana, I press that inner left upper thigh back and move that right middle buttock forward and the left one against the back of my pelvis. Now with an exhalation, I'm going to stretch the right side of my trunk out towards the wall and take my right hand down onto the block. I want you to see how I'm pressing the hand down into the block and turning the upper arm from the inside out at the same time. See how the left hip is over the knee. Now, raise the arm up so that it's in line with the leg, then turn the palm to face the wall. Now press that inner left upper thigh back, move the right ribs forward towards the wall, and turn that whole left side of the trunk from the hip to the armpit back towards the wall behind you. Then take that left hand and the arm overhead and reach for the wall. See if you can keep both sides of the trunk extending and the trunk turning up towards the ceiling as you reach for the wall. Then press that outer shin down and inhale to come back up. I'm gonna turn around and show you from the other side. You practice with me. So I'm taking my left foot in line with my knee. You can see that my toes are pointing back and towards the wall behind me. Now, like I did in Virabhadrasana 2, I'm going to open the back of the thigh from the inside out and pull the top of the back of that, th the top of the thigh bone from the front of the thigh away and towards the back of the thigh, near the hamstrings. Now, take your right hand to your waist. Press the left inner heel down into the floor and the right outer shin, outer calf, outer ankle, and the outer edge of the foot down and towards the floor. Remember that the inner right thigh in Virabhadrasana 2 moved away from the wall at the hip and at the knee. So the inner thigh has to move out. Now, with an exhalation, take the left side of your trunk towards the wall, not back, towards the hip, but forward towards the foot and place the left hand down on the block. Watch the elbow, don't let the elbow bend. Extend the elbow all the way. Now, from the outer right hip, all the way to the top of the armpit chest, turn that whole right side of the trunk back towards the wall behind you, but grip that left buttock 
press it against, move it away from the wall and against the back of the pelvis. Now raise that right arm up, turn the palm to face the wall, keep that right outer hip, side of the waist, ribs and the armpit moving back towards the wall behind you as you reach for the wall with your right arm and your hand. Now press the outer right shin, ankle and foot down, lift from the inner right thigh to inhale and come up. You can repeat this a few times. Our next pose is Ustrasana and it's camel pose. Now I'm going to take my outer shins from my outer knees to my outer angles to my little toes as wide apart as my hips. And I'm pressing my inner shins, inner shins, inner ankles, and the inner edges of my big uh, toes, or at the inner edges of my big toes down as I place the outer edges of the little toes down on the floor. Now, as you just did in Parigasana, you want to, and in Virabhadrasana too, open the backs of the upper thighs out, move the top of the thigh bones back towards the wall behind you, and lift from the pubis and the pelvis up. Lift the sides of the waist up. Lift the sides of the trunk and the armpits up and then open the ribs as wide as the arms were in Virabhadrasana too. Now tuck the toes under, reach back through the heels, press the balls of the toes down and keep that whole back body spreading from the soles of the feet widening out, the backs of the thighs spreading out, don't let the buttocks crisscross each other. Move the two buttocks and all of the spinal muscles apart, and then take your hands to your heels. Now, start with the fingers on the heels. Feel where the armpit is. Keep the back of the armpit lifting up as you crawl that hand down until the center of the palm is holding the heel. Do the same thing on that left side, bringing the hand down, but not the armpits. Then, as you did when you looked up during the um, Hasta Mudra portion of the sequence, lift the chest, lift the neck, lift the chin, lift the eyebrows, and lift the eyes. Now to come up, press the thighs from the back to the front, Take the hands off the heels and inhale to come up. Turn the toes to point back towards the wall behind you. Now you're either going to repeat what we just did or for those of you with a more seasoned practice of backward extensions, you're going to point the toes straight back and keep the bottom of the shin at the ankle and where the ankle meets the foot, firmly pressing down into the floor. Take the hands to the buttocks and use the hands to help lift the pubis and the pelvis up by taking the top of the buttocks down. Now press your pelvis back into your hands and your hands forward into your pelvis. And the elbows go slightly forward so that the shoulders can roll back and just like you did before, keeping the thighs, like in Parigasana, perpendicular to the floor, you're going to stretch your trunk up in the direction of your head to take your fingertips down onto your heels. Now, lift the back of the armpits up and move them to the front of the armpits. Keep those armpits from dropping down as you take the hands down towards the feet, don't let the armpits go down. 
Then stretch the chest, neck, and head back towards the wall behind you. To come up, press the back of the thighs into the front of the thighs and come up. The next pose is Virasana. You can practice this seated on a block or you can sit on your toes if you don't have a block with your heels apart. You can also sit down on the floor. Interlock your fingers. Turn your palms away from you. Raise your arms up. Now open the front of the throat and then keeping your hands back with an exhalation, bring your chin towards your chest without letting the upper arms come forward. Keep the wrists back, elbows back, shoulders back as you bring the head down. Then raise the head back up and change the interlace of those fingers. Turn your palms away from you. Remember the locking of the webs of the fingers and the elbows to help keep the neck from getting clenched, to keep all of that flow around the back of the ears, the sides of the neck, the upper back, at the base of the throat. Now lift the lower abdomen, lift the base of the throat up and take your wrists, elbows, and shoulders back. Now, as you bring your head down, don't let the pit of the throat, the base of the throat, or the lower abdomen drop down. Keep the wrists, elbows, and shoulders back as the head comes forward and down. And then raise the head up. Bring the arms back down and place the hands on the heels. Now, if you had a more seasoned practice now, you could spend some time practicing Pariyankasana with the legs in Virasana. And if you were feeling tired, you could practice the pose supported. See how I'm resting my upper back and my head on the block and I'm pressing the top of my thighs down towards the floor and my arms down into the block. And then I'm changing the interlace of my arms Or, and, you could practice unsupported. Coming down onto the elbows. Then the crown of the head. See how I keep my armpits up as I let go of my heels and take my elbows down. Practice the same in Padmasana and Swastikasana. So Matsyasana, either in Swastikasana or Padmasana. To finish our sequence, lie down on your back. Press the top of the back of your upper arms near your shoulders out and down. Now here, it's just like when you were standing against the wall earlier. 
You've turned the upper arms from the inside out, which spreads the clavicles and takes the top of the upper arm bones back and towards the wall behind you. Now stretch your biceps up at the top near your shoulders and down at the bottom near the elbows towards your hands. Turn your palms to hold the sides of the mat. With an exhalation, bring your knees into your chest. Now, keeping your buttock bones down, spread your spinal muscles out and press the outer sides of your waist down towards the floor. Bring your shins back towards the wall behind you and have the palms or the soles of your feet facing the wall. Now with an exhalation, press the top of your thighs from the front into the back and open the backs of the thighs out. Do the same thing with the thigh bones. At the middle, press them towards the backs of the thighs. At the bottom, at the top of the knees, press them back and towards the wall behind you. Then spread the backs of the thighs, not just at the top, but at the middle of the thighs and at the bottom, near the knees, out and towards the wall behind you. Then with an exhalation, bend your knees, bring your shins back towards your knees, and then keeping your shoulders down, bring those feet back down. Practice that two more times, coordinating the body and the breath. Inhale, draw the abdomen back and lift the chest up. Pause and bring your legs up. Then exhale and straighten the legs. Inhale, open the back of the legs. Exhale. And then at the end of the exhalation, bring the shins back towards the knees. And then place the feet on the floor. Inhale. Exhale. All the way into the lower abdomen. And then in the pause, bring the legs up. And then inhale. Straighten the knees, exhale, and at the end of the exhalation, keeping the top of the thighs moving towards the back of the thighs, bend the knees and place the feet on the floor. Then turn to your side and come up. Now watch. We're going to lie down with the shoulders and the arms stretched out along the front of the mat, bring the knees into the chest. And with an exhalation and without letting the knees turn to the side, see how I keep my knees pointing back towards you. And I'm going to keep this left side of my waist down near the floor, left shoulder down and take the legs just halfway over to the side. Then I'll inhale, and with an exhalation, bring the legs back up. Inhale. Exhale deeply into the right side of your abdomen and take the legs over to the left. Keep the right side of your waist and your right shoulder down. Keep the knees pointing back and towards the wall behind you. Then inhale, and with an exhalation, bring the legs back up. Exhale deeply into that left side of the abdomen to take the legs to the right. In the pause, straighten the legs, and then inhale and raise the legs back up. Bend the knees. Inhale. Exhale deeply into that right side of the abdomen. 
Keep the knees facing back, right side of the waist down, right shoulder down. Then extend the knees, keeping that bottom leg turned in and raise the legs back up. Inhale, exhale deeply into the right side, left side of the abdomen as you take the legs to the right and in the pause, straighten the legs and as you inhale, lift the legs. Bend your knees. Inhale, exhale into the right side of that abdomen. Keep the right side of your waist down, right shoulder down. In the pause, straighten the legs and then to bring them back up, inhale. Bend your knees. Turn to your side and come up. Now, if you have a regular practice of inversions, and a couple of blankets. You can do the same thing upside down in Sarvangasana. Uh, pardon me, Halasana, plow pose. So see how I take the top of my shoulders to the blankets. I press the shoulders down into the blankets and turn the upper arms from the inside out as I lift my hips and legs up and away from the floor. Now I'm going to keep my upper arms pressed at the top out and down and at the elbows in and down and use my hands to lift my back ribs up. Now I'm going to bend my knees and come to Karna Pidasana. See how I'm from the back of the armpit lifting all the way up to the buttocks and then moving the backs of the thighs down towards the floor and the knees in towards my chest. Now I'm going to stretch the knees and you stretch yours. If you have a difficult time straightening the legs all the way, you can just bend them partially. Just keep the back of the armpits lifting up. Now I'm going to take my knees over to the right and keeping my hips facing up towards the ceiling, I'm going to exhale deeply into that left side of my abdomen and move that left side of my waist back towards the wall behind me and this outer right hip up and away from the floor. Then I'm going to have more space once I do that to bring my knees in towards my chest. Now, keeping the right hip lifting up, abdomen turning from the right to the left, kidneys from the left to the right. I'm going to straighten my legs and come to Parsvahalasana, keeping the right side of my trunk lifting up and the abdomen turning to the left. Then I'm going to walk my legs back to either full or half Halasana. and then bend my knees all the way and come back to Karna Pidasana. Now I'm going to lift the left hip up and keep the abdomen turning from the left to the right and take those knees over as close to my left shoulder and armpit as I could get them. See how I keep that left hip lifting up and I'm turning my abdomen from the left to the right. Then I can walk my knees in a little bit more. You have to remember to keep the armpits lifting up and then straighten the legs. See how I walk that outside foot out first, then the inside foot. 
and I'm keeping this hip lifting up, the abdomen turning from the left to the right, and the kidneys moving from the right to the left, so that the left kidney moves in, which helps turn the abdomen more and more to the right. Then I walk my legs back to Halasana. Bend my knees to Karnapitasana and hug myself to myself. The small self, which is the body and the mind, towards the core of my being, the true self at the seat of the heart. Then extend the arms and with bent knees, roll back out. Keep your shoulders down. Now take the time to practice Shavasana in either legs up the wall or Supta Baddha Konasana or supported on blankets. And remember that what we think, those thoughts, the vrittis, affects our feelings and our feelings how we feel affects how we think. So those vrittis and the kleshas are interrelated, but we can learn to separate them so that we can see ourselves clearly through our practice, through that clean, clear lens of sadhana. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Thank you for your practice and your heartfelt presence.